Hey everyone, Glenn Walker here with Midwest Outdoors. Uh, we're out here on a small lake right now and time of the year is that, that weird transition between summer to fall. These bass are kind of in that awkward period of, of summer where it's not that full on summer weather pattern, but it's not quite cool enough where they're putting it on that full feed, fall feed bag yet. So these fish are transitioning and feeding both on offshore rock spots, but also cruising that shallow water cover, uh, looking for you know bait fish, bluegills, uh, frogs up shallow. So today we're gonna kind of put together a, a, both a shallow water pattern and an offshore pattern. Right now we're starting offshore, seeing if we can get a school active right away in the morning. So moving up shallow here, I was looking for just some some of this duckwort mat with some lily pads mixed in. Threw my frog up in there and this guy just inhaled it. So the important thing when you're fishing a topwater frog is to use the right tackle. You don't want to be using monofilament. You don't want to be using fluorocarbon. If you're fishing a topwater frog, you need to be use, you, you need to be using 65 pound braided line. Um, I'm using Seaguar Smackdown. And I mean, I can cast my frog into the thickest and nastiest of cover. And when I get a bite, set the hook. I mean, that fish was stuck good. So I mean, just a nice healthy fish living up in the shallows, get him back in the water. All right, had one hit, blow up behind my frog here. Never, I never, he never hit it. I never set the hook on it. So I'm gonna make a nice slow cast. Take my time, get to right where he blew up. Get back to that area right where that fish is. I'm gonna let that frog just marinate right where that hole was and get him in the boat. Your eyes are the, one of the biggest keys to success. You can't be looking down, you can't be looking up at the sky. You need to be paying attention to what your frog's doing because if I, would've, if I wouldn't have been paying attention, that little blow up I had that, that this fish missed my frog, I may have not seen that and I could have missed out on getting this fish in the boat. So anytime you're bringing your frog across a mat, lily pads, pay attention if you see some disturbance in the water, if you see bait flicker, if you see a bluegill all of a sudden pop, make note of that area, get your frog in, make that cast right back out to that area because you never know what you're gonna be able to get. Stay on. So I've had, I have my talons down in this corner here, and now in a matter of about 10 minutes, I've caught three you know, solid largemouth like this on a frog. And so when you're topwater frog fishing, if you catch one fish, don't automatically rush out of that area. You know, Take your time, make a numerous casts. As you can see across this green mat, my frog tracks are basically about every six to 12 inches. I'm just literally trying to get my frog tracks to cover every square inch of that duckwort mat because there is obviously something underneath that mat that is congregating these fish. It could be a boulder, it could, the water could be just slightly deeper, it could be a sand spot, whatever it is. These largemouth are cornered in there and they're hungry. If you fish a lot of crankbaits or topwater plugs, you wanna check out the Lure Lock 4-in-1 Deep Box. What makes this ultra deep box so unique is it how customizable it is. So this is my deep diving crankbait box. So I have all these big plugs down here. The gel secures them in there. They're not gonna get tangled. The paint finishes aren't gonna get chipped. Hook points aren't gonna get dull when I'm running down the lake. So then if I know I'm gonna be fishing deep diving baits that day, I can layer these trays in, which also have the Tac Logic Technology gel in them. Layer those trays in. That way, when I'm on the water and fishing deep diving crankbaits that day, I know I have all the baits with me. The gel secures them in there so they're not beating around in the boat. So if I just want some deep diving crankbaits, I can put them in that bottom tray. And I have a tray back at home that has you know, shallow running crankbaits. Put that tray on top, lip those crankbaits, throw a tray of those in. So you can go from having one box full of one style of crankbait to layering the different trays and then have different styles, have them all organized and easily accessible. So check out the Lure Lock 4-in-1 Deep Box. Mm. 
yeah. Woo! Look at that big girl. <laughs> Woo! So this end of summer, early fall transition period for bass is a great time to be roaming the shallows, looking for shallow water, structure and cover for those fish. One of the best ways to target matted vegetation is with a topwater frog. You can throw it on top of anything, you can bring it through that thick and nasty stuff, and what's lying underneath there is fish like this. I'm Glenn Walker. Stay tuned for more Midwest Outdoors.